Hey friends, it's Jill here from the Hometown Homestead where we focus on all things homemade, homegrown, and homeschooled. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics recently, which is minimizing the homeschool clutter. If you've been homeschooling very long, you know exactly what I'm talking about because it adds up really, really fast. You probably have an abundance of things that you don't really need around anymore. So let me help you out with my seven tips to minimize the homeschool clutter. And if you have any additional questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe if content like this is something that is of interest to you. So without further ado, let's get started. So tip number one is to pick digital or online curriculums. Not only does this cut down on the need for shipping and boxes and the clutter that comes along with that, but it also prevents you from stacking up used curriculum on your shelf once you move through it. And you don't have to either sell it or take it to a bookstore or have it sitting around. All of that disappears when you deal with the digital. So take a look at the pricing options for those as well. Often you can save a lot of money by getting the digital over the print version. To make this most effective, I do not print the teacher's manual. I actually keep all of them on my laptop and then every day when I need to pull up that curriculum, I will just pop it open, pull up the PDF and read exactly what I need to do. Um, I initially started this with some gather around units that we were doing and it quickly became apparent to me that I could save a whole lot of space in my house plus not be tracking down extra books if I just didn't print those out to begin with. It's also helpful when you have the digital because you can cast the content to your TV, which helps keep the kids engaged if you're reading a long passage or talking about something where there's a diagram or something on the actual teacher's manual page because you can cast it right up there and they can follow along with you, which is really, really helpful for keeping those short attention spans in check. I still do print out the workbook pages for my kids. We do this for Gather Around, for Math with Confidence, and for Logic of English. And then I have a specific binder for each kid in my house. So this is my son's binder right here, my side of the mountain. Next, I have the one for my little lady. We're using the foundations curriculum from Logic of English with her, which I've done with my older two boys as well, and I really love it. And this year when it was time to get the next workbook, I decided to go with the digital so I can print it out for subsequent kids coming forward and also only print out a few pages for her at a time as needed. She has her math curriculum and her logic of English in the same binder and anytime she needs to do schoolwork, she can grab this one item and be ready to go. So this brings me to my 1.1 tip, which is if you're gonna do digital curriculum, you have to have a great printer. And we went with the EcoTank printer and we have not been disappointed one bit. It's been a huge savings for us and given us the ability to take advantage of digital curriculum savings and be able to print whatever we need whenever we need it. Now to go along with that, I have noticed that the type of paper that you're actually getting makes a huge difference. And I hate to admit that because I wanted to just buy the less expensive paper, but it jams more when you get less expensive paper and the colors are not as vibrant on the page. So it's a little less interesting for the kids. Now, one thing on the printing, I don't print the whole book at one time anymore like I used to and then sit down and bind it. What I do is I just do the unit that we're on or with my foundations curriculum from Logic of English, I printed two weeks workout and I shoved it in the binder. If something spills or something gets ripped, guess what? We only printed a couple pages out, so it's not a really big deal to lose it. It also means that just to get them ready to go when their next unit is up, it just takes about four or five minutes to get the next section and slide it right in the binder. I have a big three hole punch that actually does about 40 pages at a time and it's been a fabulous investment. I used to have a binding machine and I would have to get it out and laminate the tops, punch all of the holes, the cutting the whole bit. Since I quit doing that, it has been so, so quick and I have really enjoyed making the switch, getting rid of my binding machine, and going with the hole punch. Now, as my kids' binders wear out, I am gonna transition them all over to the Five Star Binder Notebooks, and if you haven't seen these, they are fantastic, okay? So it's like a binder, but it's actually a notebook in that you can flip it open, you have different subjects. They come with the divider tabs already built in, flip to whatever subject you're on. So for example, this is our fourth grade math with confidence pilot. And I have the folder right here that already comes in there. 
where I can keep any um, Blackline Masters or game boards or I can flip to my next section. This is my James Method um, Bible Mapping Journal. So I have a little stuff in here for me as well. When it's time for me to reorder my teacher planner, I will be able to keep that same record keeping in the exact same five-star binder notebook with the actual units and lessons that I am teaching my kids at the same time. Not only is having it all together gonna reduce the clutter, but I'm not gonna be spending that same amount to repurchase the new teacher planner every single year when it's time to get a new record system. So that itself is a bonus. Which brings me to my next tip. You could do record keeping all digitally. You do not have to keep all of the hard copies of your children's work. You can simply take pictures of a few items or whatever your state requires, take pictures of those items and then simply upload them to a Dropbox file or some online storage system with the child's name, then the year, and then the subject that it belongs to. And if your state ever needs you to come back and produce anything, even years down the road, you'll still have access to that same Dropbox file and you'll be able to pull all of that out without keeping stacks and stacks and stacks of paperwork on your shelf. And for me, that's a huge win. I just recently decided to make the switch and I took a whole bunch of my used curriculums that we have kept over the years to the recycling bin. It felt so good to make my room that much cleaner. Now, my next tip is to take advantage of your local library. Our town is very small and rural and we have a very tiny little local library thankfully just right up the street. One thing I suggest is to check on their digital options. Do they offer Hoopla free with your library membership? Probably so. And that gives you the opportunity to look at a lot of books digitally online without actually having to even go up there and check them out, which is really great. Another thing they can do is request an interlibrary loan from another library system, even if they don't have the book that you necessarily need in stock. That is a wonderful advantage when the library that you have close doesn't have a huge selection of books to offer. You might need to plan a little bit ahead of time because it can take a couple weeks for them to request and get them sent from another library. Now, while we're we're talking about libraries. If you have any extra books at home, children's books, or just books that you're never going to read again, donate those to your local library. Our library here in town is even having a book sale today of things that have been donated or that they're no longer using. And we have sent book after book after book up there to get rid of because they are going to be able to sell those books and recoup money for their local library fund system. And this brings me to my next life changing tip. Throw away all of the junky pencils, the ones with the print and the cute little stuff on them. Oh, they're horrible. They break so easy, the erasers are junk, and they jam up in your pencil sharpener when you're going to sharpen them. About two and a half years ago, I threw away every single pencil in my house and I ordered a box of Ticonderoga pencils. Now, you probably don't recognize these as being black because typically they are yellow, but I didn't want yellow pencils, so I went ahead and got the black ones. It's the same cost, so it's the little things that make me happy. And then to go with them, I got a bunch of these pink paper made erasers. The thing is, these pencils don't break. The lead lasts forever. I actually have not seen one broken pencil in two and a half years in my house. So the erasers really go through it well before the pencils do. If you buy the Paper Mate, the Pink Paper Mate eraser tops, they are fabulous. They don't bend when you try to erase on them, so they're not like really flimsy. They're gonna be strong and last, but they also actually erase. Recently, somebody actually gave us some school supplies and there was a pack of really cute multicolored eraser tops and my sons were really interested in it. I'm like, hey, go ahead, you know, whatever. Try it out if you want. So my son went to erase something on the very first worksheet and the, the eraser itself bent and broke and didn't take anything off the page. And he ripped it off, threw it in their trash, and asked for his pink one back. So it's not just me. These things are the way to go. Don't mess with the others. You don't need it. And while you're at it, grab a really nice electric pencil sharpener because it will save you a lot of time and hassle and sharpen to a razor fine point. The next issue I want to address with homeschool clutter is math manipulatives. And we all know this can just get plain out of hand. So we started with Right Start and that huge kit we went to Singapore, which needed other things, and now we're on Math with Confidence. And thankfully, Math with Confidence has a super simple kit, and most of which can be found around your house. So I have gotten rid of so many things. We don't need linking cubes, and we don't need a 100 little colored tiles everywhere. So my little math kit here has a 100 pennies, because sometimes you do need a secondary color. I have a, a handful of other change thrown into it. 
some dice because we use them often and a set of scissors. This is the bulk of our math kit. The other thing that we use for math is two decks of playing cards, which you can get locally. And then we have to make our own flashcard. If you have to make flashcards for anything, do yourself a favor and grab a set of multicolored with a hole punch already through them. These cards are very strong. We've used them for quite a while now. And I know what I need to grab which set simply by what color the cards are in line. So whether you're making your own alphabet cards, multiplication facts, division, whatever the subject and whatever you're doing, having the sets that are gonna be stronger, last, and stay together is gonna be a huge clutter buster and also help you know where everything is when you're looking for it down the road. One other of my favorite math tips is to look for an app on your phone called CoinFlip. Then if you're ever doing something where you need to flip a coin, you don't have to go looking for one specifically because it's all right there on your phone and you don't have to go chasing it around. Now, I like a lot of hands-on, but this one saves a lot of time and is really great if the baby's around trying to get in the mix. Now, Logic of English is what I mentioned earlier for our language arts program. And let me tell you, it can come with a whole lot of pieces. I actually don't use most of them, but we're starting our third child on Logic of English. And what I have found useful is to grab these plastic photo organizers at any kind of craft store and to keep the cards that you're working on in here along with a dry erase marker and then the dry erase board. That's all of the extras that I use with the program. I don't pull out all the tiles. I don't do any of that. And both of my boys have been super successful with it minus all of the extra clutter. If you have any more questions about Logic of English and specifically how we do certain things minus all of the extra clutter, don't hesitate to let me know below and I would be happy to do a video on that kind of content for you as well. So now is the time to put your comments below, grab a trash bag and hit the recycling bin and get rid of all of the clutter that you thought you needed because you were a homeschool mom. I hope this has answered some of your questions and given you some useful tips. Make sure to subscribe below while you're down there. Hope to see you back soon. Have a great day.